So we've learned the basics of confidence intervals and we've learned how to find critical values. So now it's time for us to put it all together and find a confidence interval from beginning to end for a single proportion. All right, so we have two formulas up here. So there's formulas right up here. Sorry, I made a pen mark and I, when I tried to make this video before. So that's Z alpha over two. So if you remember the basic structure, um, the basic structure, I'm just gonna write it up here. Recall, it's always point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. That gets you your interval, right? Your interval is your lower number, comma, your upper number, right? That's how it works, right? This is how confidence intervals work. And if you look at the formula, you can see it. The point estimate is the p hat, right? It's right here, it's before the plus or minus. And then you add and subtract, your margin of error, which is that big piece right there. Or this formula, point estimates right there, plus or minus margin of error. There it is. Both are perfectly valid formulas. They actually mean the same thing. It's that the standard error is this bit with the square root. So either way works, it doesn't matter, right? But this is the basic formula for a confidence interval, right? Confidence intervals always do this. Well, not always, but they always will for us <laughs> because of the way our confidence levels are working, which ones we're doing. Now, the p, the p hat, I just want to remind us all from chapter six, we first saw this. x over n, that's the number of successes divided by the number of trials, if you will, or the count, the total, right? So we have, you know, this many yes votes out of this many total, that kind of thing. And then we have some technology pieces that I'll help you with, as well as the requirements, which should look a bit familiar. That's random and independent and normal, which we learned about in chapter eight, um, if we studied chapter eight. But if not, we'll, we'll go over them now. All right, so example three, a YouGov poll from October 2019 found that in a random sample of 1,293 random adult Americans, 46% of them say, um, believe ghosts either definitely exist or probably exist. We want to know the true proportion of all adult Americans that believe in ghosts. There are 210 million adults in the US, just on a side note. Okay, so what's the sample and what's its size? Well, that would be, the, the group that we talked to. So it's 1,293 random adult Americans. And that's the size, by the way, N. Um, actually, I should reverse this, sorry. Um, if I'm gonna go in the order that they asked. So the sample is random adult Americans. And the size is 1,293. There we go. Now I have it in the correct order. The population would be all adult Americans. <laughs> Ran out of space for my L there. And then the population size is capital N, which is 210 million. And that's just a little review of notation. We learned that notation back in chapter three, believe it or not, it was a long time ago. A little n is sample size. N stands for number, by the way. So a little number for the sample is 1,293. Capital N is the population, that's 210 million. All right, so now we're gonna verify the conditions are met in order to construct a confidence interval for P. Okay, so verifying the conditions, right? We're only going to do this because it asks us to. We don't do this um, unless it's asked for. But there they are right there. Re conditions, requirements, tomato, tomato. So random sample. So number one, we need it to be a random sample. And that's given. I think I wrote the word random right there. So this is yes because it's given. Step two, independent. Okay, technically it's independent of the population. All right, so that's gonna be yes, but I've gotta prove it. So the way we're independent is if we're with replacement, then it's automatically independent. Like if you're putting people back in the bin, then no problem. But if it's without replacement, which this is assumed to be without replacement, we need our little n, which is one, two, nine, three, to be less than or equal to 0.05 of capital N. 
less than 5%. So 1,293 is less than 0.05 of 210 million. And indeed it is. <laughs> I can prove this. This is this is kind of an of course moment. Um, a lot of times I don't even make you bother um, writing this out because we all know that it's going to be. But if you wanted to be precise about it, we could do this. Let me grab Desmos. All right, so 0 0.05 times 210 million, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the millions place and so on. You can see it's 10,500,000. And so therefore, yes, right? So 1,293 is indeed less than 10,500,000. Check. So if you want to stop up at this line and say, of course, that's fine with me. It's so huge. Of course, it's going to be less than that. But if you actually want to go and find the calculation, that's also OK. Either one's fine, at least just for my purposes. <laughs> you only have to check this, you know, if it's really close. But 210 million million, this is going to be less than that, so I don't have to worry about it. Last one is the normal, which is right up here. I need n p hat q hat to be greater than or equal to 10. Right, you just follow the, the list. It has them all in there. OK, n is little n, which is 1,293. We set it right up here times and okay now the thing about math people is that they they imply a lot of things <laughs> so npq like this is implying that it's multiplication so there's actually like a times dot in there and p hat well p hat is the proportion of success from our group which is 0.46 right there so that's 0 0.46 i think this will be easier to see if i do use parentheses it's multiplication and then you're multiplying that by Q. Well, remember, P and Q are complements of each other. Let me just, I'll write it down here. P and Q are complements. So 1 minus P equals Q. So um, 1 minus 0.46 is 0.54. So that's 0.54. So I just need to go find those. So let me grab decimals again. OK, so 1,293 times 0.46 times 0.54, which just for the record is the same thing as if you multiply in parentheses versus times dots. It's all the same thing. It's 321. I just wanted to prove that it was. <laughs> so. It's a notation thing, and math teachers and math professors are not always good about it. Um, they just write NPQ and assume you know that means multiplication, but it does. Right? There's, there's little dots in there. They're hidden. All right, so that is indeed bigger than 10, so yes. So this is a yes, this is a yes, and this is a yes. We have three yeses. Yes, yes, yes. We have met all the conditions in order to construct a confidence interval. Isn't that nice? All right, now this is a different question. Um, I'm not actually going to go make the confidence interval yet. I'm going to take an aside and I'm going to find out how many people believed in ghosts. This is actually a very important calculation. So we're going to make a little note over here. Note, this calculation will be needed for um, technology. This calculation is needed to use stat crunch. Actually, I'm the calculator, but so we and or the calculator. So that's why we're prepping it now. You're going to do this calculation a lot. You will do this calculation frequently. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, well, what is it they're asking us to do then? Oops, sorry, I forgot what I was writing. Well, they want to know how many believed in ghosts, which, if you think about this, you know that p hat is x over n, right? So this is the number of successes, which in our case is believe in ghosts, right? Because that's what we were looking for right up here. 
believe in ghosts, right? So that's X, success, right? So this is the number that believe in ghosts divided by the total. Okay, so in other words, they're asking for X. They want us to know what is X. That's what we're looking for. Well, it's not a particularly difficult problem because we know p hat. p hat is right here. It's 0.46. I mean, maybe I should have labeled it, but it's right here. Hello, p hat. Right? So that's 0.46. So I go, okay, 0.46 equals x, which I don't know. But I do know lowercase n because I set it right up here. I've used it three times now. It's 1, 2, 9, 3. So 1, 2, 9, 3. And now you just have to remember a tiny bit of algebra. When you have a division like this, you multiply in order to get rid of division. So I take both sides and I times it by 1, 2, 9, 3. And if I do it to the right because I want to get rid of that, then I have to do it to the left to keep it fair. So all I have to do is take 1, 2, 9, 3 times 0.46. So let me grab Desmos. Okay. 1293 times 0.46. And I get 594.78. Now here's the thing. You can't have 0.78 of a person believing in ghosts. It's impossible. So you have to round it to the nearest regular number. Just regular rounding is fine. So X is 5. 94.78, so it's 595 people. It's just regular rounding. If it's 5 and higher, you round up. If it's 4 and lower, you round down. Just normal rounding. So I'll just make a note. Round to nearest whole number. And there we have it.